cause and effect diagram. A problem solving method was developed by Kairo Ishikawa, who pioneered the quality management process in Kawasaki shipyards and became one of the founding fathers of modern management. The basic concept was first used in 1920 and became popular in 1960s. Dr. Edwards Deeming also adopted this technique. Both Ishikawa and Deeming used this diagram as one of the first tools in quality management approach. This method is also called Ishikawa diagram or fishbone diagram or fishikawa because its shape looks like a side view of a fish skeleton. This technique's philosophy is based on the effect it is a problem you are dealing with. However, there is a hidden cause you need to find in order to eliminate it and to solve the problem permanently. Types of causes can be human, physical, or organizational. It helps you identify the contributing factors to the problem. Therefore, you may conduct further investigation. It is commonly used for product design and quality defect prevention. Fishbone diagram works with complex problems and gives a comprehensive vision of the whole process. In addition, it is considered as a good tool to visualize the situation to stakeholders. Process of cause and effect diagrams starts with assembling a team. It is important to construct a diagram with the people involved in the problem. Then define the problem. Make sure that your team agree on the problem statement. Include as much information as possible in the what, where, when, and how much of the problem. Use data to specify the problem if possible. Write down the problem on the side of a paper or board. Identify the possible casual factors. There are typical categories of each business or industry. These categories include all functions the business needs to run. They are the factors or causes of the problem. Each potential cause is tracked back to find the root cause, often using the five whys approach, appreciation, or drill down technique. Brainstorm every cause to identify the sub causes. Then draw branches of every category to write down the sub causes you identified. Break down each sub cause into its elements. Then draw your lines of the sub causes you determined in the previous step. Analyze your diagram by asking the following questions. How likely is this cause to be the major source of the issue or variation? How easy would it be to fix it or control it? You may answer these questions with very likely, somewhat likely, or not likely. Put the answers of the two questions together. Work on the causes that have a result of VV, VS, and SV. Ideally, causes should appear in only one category, although some people's causes may overlap. You can use a cause and effect diagram as a working document that is updated when you collect more data or to try various solutions.